one verse for your attention. Galatians, the epistle of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 1. Chapter 1, in verse 3, we have the salutation, grace unto you, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, verse 4, concerning Jesus Christ. This is Galatians 1, 4. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. This present evil world the original language suggests the age and this is the same age as the dispensation of grace that he's talking about. Now in our last time together we saw that God gave life in order that we might have a remarkable position of being in Christ in the heavens that this was accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ who went to the cross for us poor lost sinners and here we find something else that he went to the cross that he might save us from our sins he died for our sins Why? So that he might deliver us from this present evil world or this present evil age. I wonder how many ever think about that. That one of the reasons and one of the results of Christ's suffering and death on the cross of Calvary was that he might take those who believe in him and thus deliver them from the present evil age. It's something to think about. If God allows, and it is his will, I would like to spend a little time with you, or get someone else to do it, on the philosophy that the devil has brought upon the minds of men in opposition to divine revelation. What is the prevailing philosophy? What makes things tick in the minds of men? What do they think? What do they believe? How are they operating? We can go back, of course, to the Garden of Eden where we have the enemy questioning the word of God. Hath, not, hath God said, do, do, do you really believe that God said this? And when he found that that didn't succeed, then he gave his interpretation. He said, I'll let you know really what the real meaning is that deeper meaning that has escaped you that God knows that when you take of the forbidden fruit you'll know and to make the distinction between good and evil the philosophy the prevailing philosophy of our time has many crude forms many crude forms and we might mention some of them because we need to be familiar for example we have slogans and sayings to risk it nothing ventured nothing gained take a chance also experimenting 
is self-rewarding and education. This is permeating the educational system in America today, not only on the secondary level, but in the college and graduate level as well. Experimenting is self-rewarding and educating. It's a frightening thing. And that belief in God is not necessary to learning. You see how this is just the opposite? You don't have to have God to have an education. You don't have to have God to learn something. You don't have to have God to get a degree. See, it's part of that philosophy which I would like to spend some time with you on, but I can't do it now. The Word of God makes it very plain that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of education. Leave God out and you have only foolishness. Probably we need to be reminded again of how foolish the theory of evolution really is. It has no scientific basis and yet it's generally accepted. A young man who was here for a short time during missionary conference uh, told me, he said, they're not teaching evolution in college now. He said, it's just accepted. They don't have to teach it anymore. And as far as the students are concerned, they just accept evolution. How come? something we might be concerned about. Some time ago, we were reading a little bit about the courses being offered in high schools in different parts of New England. I don't know about other parts of the country. I think it's true in California as well. A course called uh, Self-Awareness. self awareness and then you look into this and you say how can intelligent human beings who are grown ups want to teach this to kids and teenagers when you know what it is because it removes all responsibility do what you want to do express yourself and that sort of thing Conservative newspapers in the last month have, and the only ones, have brought out the fact that this teaching of self-awareness, as it is called, has produced violence. Reporters have interviewed kids guilty of murder and more recently uh, we were reading about a woman who uh, ag agreed with teenagers to kill her husband and the reporter said that they couldn't detect in any one of these people any sense of remorse or feeling of guilt only some regret that they were brought to justice. Conscience has gone down the drain in this teaching of self-awareness. A dishonesty then is masked as being just plain clever. If God gives me the time and the strength and you give me the time, I'd like to spend some time on the basis of God's own word to show the evil of the satan, the satanic philosophy that has come 
upon us. And it has affected even interpretation of Scripture. This idea that the world is good and getting better is, an, is a lie. It's awful. We have to learn that this world that we are delivered from, this age that we are delivered from, so we can't be compelled to be a part of it, is Satan's domain, as we heard in our last session, isn't it? This whole world lieth in the evil one, writes the Apostle John. And, the, and this refers to the philosophy, the way of thinking, the distorted values, and so forth. And among these we might mention, one of the more recent that has come to our attention is that dishonesty being masked as plain cleverness. Not only in education and amusements and uh, politics, economy and so forth, but even in business itself. This idea that dishonesty is not bad, it's just cleverness. In going over the, uh, the history of uh, Calvin Coolidge, who was president of the United States for a short time, it brought me into the administration prior to his of uh, Warren Gamaliel Harding. He gathered into his cabinet what he thought and what the political uh, big shots thought were the most brilliant men. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think everyone was a millionaire. So he didn't have to, he didn't need any more pennies. There was Dorothy, who was appointed Attorney General. Denby, who was appointed Secretary of the Navy. Albert Fall, who was appointed Secretary of the Interior. These fellows were church-going men and contributors to religion and charities. But they weren't satisfied. They wanted to be clever. And they knew that the United States Navy had a large oil reserve where the Navy was putting in oil so there would be fuel in case of any emergency the United States Navy could draw on that. But these fellows found a very clever way. They had to work together. Attorney General, uh, Secretary of the Navy, uh, Secretary of the Interior, where the uh, oil was stored, and they figured out a way in which they could tap the resources of oil for the United States Navy. And they made bundles of money. And as time went on, they became bolder and bolder. Finally, of course, somebody asked a question concerning something that was happening in the neighborhood. And one thing led to another. That whole cabinet provided the greatest scandal in the history of the United States. And not that these men needed the money. Some of them, maybe you, you, you've read about it. It's uh, under the heading of the Teapot Dome scandal. Some of them went to jail. One fellow made a trip to a Europe, he never came back. He died there as a fugitive from, from justice. What is it that can get into the minds of people? Something like this. That's the philosophy that I'm talking about. And we need to know it. 
not from what I'm saying now in the way of a few illustrations, but what does the word of God say? So that we'll know the opposite. We are told in the book of God, love not the world, neither the things that, that are in the world. A funny man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And Christ has delivered us from all of that. Now remember, when you're teaching little kids, when you're teaching little kids, you're, you're aware of this awful, evil philosophy that grips the minds of men. You know that. But they're not capable of grabbing hold of something like that. So you have to teach them on the level of don't touch. You understand? That's the only level they will understand whether you're, whatever you're talking about in the areas of, of the world, whether it's amusements or, or politics or, or, or anything else or even, even what some companions are doing. Because you know it's of the world, you know it's Satan's domain. But as the child gets a little older, and I believe certainly by the time he gets into his early teens, if not sooner, he ought to be acquainted with the evil philosophy of Satan. That it's anti-God. For example, we mentioned a moment ago about education in the United States. What are the kids being taught today in the way of values, eternal values? And there is this constant pressure to leave God out. Leave God out. Oh, don't talk about God. That's some horrible, terrible thing to do. And the kids are growing up, being taught in our public schools to be, for all practical purposes, atheists. What are they going to be like as parents? What are they going to be like if in the field of business or, or, or wherever they're in, in their life's career? What will it be? Our whole society, including both Democrat and Republican parties, have become enveloped by this evil philosophy. And it causes them to do things that are so irrational that you cannot understand how they could possibly think that way. A nation in economic distress. And yet these fellows give away and cancel billions, billions of dollars of debt to other countries. That's your money and mine. And where is the voice like that of the Teddy Roosevelt who will call the shots? Oh no, they're working for a better world. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. The businessman, for example, who accepts the philosophy of uh, what what, what goes, let it go, will be successful for a short time. The devil has a way of making his philosophy very attractive so that it'll work, but it'll work for a time. A number of years ago, a missionary came, spent some time with us, and he'd been traveling a little bit and here and there in the state, and and uh, he said to me, he said, uh, I know a wonderful, wonderful steakhouse. He said, for anyone who likes steaks and uh, beef and so forth, this is a place to go. Uh, he gave the name. And he gave the name of the town. And he said he had been there. He'd heard of it before. 
Other people had told them, and the missionary, if you come into New England, a particular town, that's where you want to go if you want, if you like uh, steaks and, and beef and so forth. Now, that doesn't happen to be my favorite. Doesn't happen to be my favorite at all. But I was interested to hear him say it. Sometime later, sometime later, a fellow who was helping me move some stuff around, he had his old truck and, uh, and uh, I wanted to give him something for gas, Celine, so forth, he wouldn't do it. And we got into this town and all of a sudden I remembered the name of that restaurant. And I thought, ha, ah, the least I can do is give this fellow a feed. And he was getting hungry by that time. It was almost noon. So uh, we went in there. Something had happened. The portions were small, skimpy. And the prices had been upped. And I had heard that it was a place where people were standing in line to get in. And if you wanted a noon luncheon, you'd have to be there at 11 or 11.30. That's the way it had been. But they had changed hands. They'd sold out to someone else. And that someone else was clever and decided, well, why give them so much to eat? We'll cut our way a little. We'll chop away a little. We'll serve a little less and a little less and a little less. Other people knew about this and have, and I have talked with people who are well acquainted with that situation and they said, yes, that's, that's what happened. They lost out in the long run because they were trying to cheat on a daily basis. How foolish. I remember the story that went the rounds when I was a kid about the man who thought he could save a little bit uh, and not have to feed his horse so much. Uh, it cost money to buy grain and oats and, and uh, things to feed the horse. And so he had a pile of sawdust, very fine, thin sawdust. And he thought he would uh, add a little sawdust to the grain or to the oats, and, uh, which he did. Mixed it in, and uh, the horse ate. The horse seemed to be filled and happy. And then when he saw it was working pretty well, he thought, well, maybe I can add a little bit more sawdust and not have so much grain which he did and the horse seemed to eat and get along and uh, finally he, he was uh, using less grain and more and more sawdust and the horse was uh, was eating it and uh, by and by he was giving the horse just sawdust and the horse was eating it Well, you see, it worked until the horse died. The devil has a way. You go out in the business or in profession or anywhere unless you have the authority of, the God, of God's own word and his standard and his philosophy, you can be drawn into the world's philosophy and assume that a little dishonesty won't hurt if you can make a little extra money. Like the fellow who was selling his old jalopy and he knew it would cost about $1,500 to get it fixed up and really running in good condition and all the rust uh, removed. So he figured that the market value probably would be, well, maybe $2,000 would be so forth, but and then whoever bought it would have to spend another a thousand five hundred to fix it up. He thought, no, I'm going to charge three thousand five hundred, hoping that somebody will come along who's stupid enough, who doesn't know enough, and I'll shine that thing up on the outside. You see, people smile at that; they think it's clever. 
But Christians need to remember that the same devil who would lead us into deep quagmire of iniquity is clever enough to lead us from the straight and narrow path. Now we've looked at some ugly things, some terrible things. But the word of God takes the whole thing and says, don't love it. Don't love the things that are in it. Because if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Oh, how I wish I could take our young people and just hug every one of them and say, take this to heart. Because the world is attractive. It's attractive. It's styles. It's amusements. It's music. And all of that. We as adults need to remember that it's all part of Satan's domain. It's his domain. And while we can tell little kids don't touch because they can't understand but as they get older we need to teach them the truth that this is God's own word and that God had a reason for saying it because we read in the word of God of examples where men have turned from the true service of God to serving self and we remember reading of one who forsook the ministry of being of help to the Apostle Paul having loved this present world. It doesn't happen all at once. But it happens when a girl begins to want to dress a certain way. She wants to wiggle her body a certain way. She's watched this on the screen and she's seen this on television and she thinks, that's the way to go. That'll make you popular. And the devil just urges it on. Urges it on. And the child doesn't realize that it's part of the whole rotten, filthy, dirty system. The devil's philosophy that is anti-God. You probably saw in the Boston papers of <clears throat> a state college where the decision had been made not to have a baccalaureate service because that would be religious and God would be mentioned and not to have an invocation or prayer at the beginning of the graduation or a benediction at the close. Why? Why? Because it would be an insult to people to have God recognized in the graduation exercises. Who would have thought that it would go this far? I certainly didn't. I didn't think that the rapture would be delayed that long. But we're here. And we're here to shine as lights, as an assembly, and as individuals, before a crooked and perverse generation. But we better not love it. We better not allow ourselves to be attracted to it. Just obey the word of God. And we're going to be in the minority. Because as time goes on, there will be more and more people infatuated with this new, what they think is a new philosophy, a greater freedom. I remember a young couple came to me, they wanted to be married, and uh, I knew the girl knew the way of salvation. I didn't know how much she had prompted the fellow that... <clears throat> she was going to get tied to but I felt that I should talk with them this was in the early days and uh, and as we talked a little while and I spoke to him about the fact that I'd like to show him 
God's plan of salvation because I thought he needed to know God's plan of salvation because he was intending to marry a girl who uh, said that she was saved. And so I brought up that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I thought that was the place to start, you know, because only sinners need to be saved and only sinners need salvation. And you know, he got all excited. He, he had just graduated from college and he had learned something that this poor minister didn't know. And he said, I don't have any guilt complexes. Oh, that was not the subject. The problem was that he didn't have a guilt complex, but he needed one. But he didn't know that. So any attempt to show man in his fallen state is being laughed at today even by evangelists and, 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 and uh, TV preachers because they talk about people coming to Jesus but they're not making it plain that the people are sinners before a holy God and they are undone and they are evil and they are lost and so people come and people flock and they give money because they think it's like rallying around the flag or something to take the name of Jesus they're not going to go to heaven that way and I wonder how many of you will stand with me after I have spent a little more time on the subject of the devil's philosophy and its exposition in the word of God I wonder how many how many others maybe some will turn away and say oh that's narrow that's, that, that's kind of narrow that's, that's old fashioned I don't know but I'm putting it before you that here it is written that the devil is the prince of this world Jesus said so and all of this world is in the lap of the evil one and his philosophy beginning in the garden of Eden has permeated our society to a marked degree so different from the society envisioned by the founding fathers of this republic who were not necessarily evangelical Christians I'm burdened for the young people today for the boys and the girls growing up in our Christian homes and as parents we have a responsibility to cause them to see that this whole realm is under the dominion of satanic philosophy and that they have to be apart from it if they're going to please God or regret it well time is up thanks for listening love not the world neither the things that are in the world our loving heavenly father we thank thee for the distinctions that are clearly made in, in thy word for those who want the truth so we pray that somehow thou wilt increase increase the number of men and women and boys and girls who want the truth over and above everything else we pray in Jesus name Amen